Hello, everyone. Welcome to my talk on data pipeline health check for correctness, performance, and cost efficiency. I'm Shivnath Babu. I'm male with short hair. I'm sitting in my office. And it's a real pleasure to be in front of you giving this talk today. I'm co founder and CTO at Unravel. I'm also an adjunct professor of computer science at Duke University. I work at Unravel. And Unravel has been built to radically simplify data operations. For example, if you are managing data pipelines, Unravel will bring together all the telemetry information related to your pipeline, apps, clusters, resource usage, data sets, all in a single place where you can get a holistic end-to-end -end view to troubleshoot issues, to find and fix problems, to get alerts, when anomalous behavior happens on a cluster. Unravel does all of this by running advanced AI machine learning algorithms on the telemetry data, and it goes beyond helping you find problems or the root causes to problems, also enabling you to fix them automatically so that you can get high efficiency as well as high agility as you are building your data pipelines on the modern data stack. Every company is well on its way to becoming a data company. And this across industries such as entertainment, finance, transportation, healthcare. And what these companies are doing is they're creating advanced data products, products that are based on insights generated from a variety of data sources. And the way these insights are generated are based on data pipelines which have a fairly common structure. The data needs to be captured and ingested into distributed storage platforms from where it is using advanced compute, it is transformed to generate insights that might actually involve machine learning or it might involve advanced SQL analytics. And once this data is transformed, the results are published so that the data products can consume them. So this is the overall structure of these data pipelines. And to build data pipelines, a modern stack has emerged that involves a variety of systems, such as Airflow for orchestration, Snowflake and Redshift for the data warehousing, and Databricks and Presto for advanced analytics based on the data lake, Kafka and Spark streaming for processing the data in real time, Data Hub and Amundsen for the data catalogs of Tekton for the feature store, as well as TensorFlow and PyTorch for the machine learning. So once you have multiple systems being combined in your data pipeline, naturally, these data pipelines can be complex. So in this talk today, I will actually share with you a recipe to keep your data pipelines humming along fine. How do you keep a data pipeline healthy? To understand that, let's first understand what a healthy pipeline looks like. And health can be considered along three dimensions, correctness, performance, and cost. To understand this better, let's take a look at what it means to be unhealthy. So unhealthy from a correctness perspective, this could be that your pipeline is generating incorrect results or failing outright. From a performance perspective, maybe your pipeline is missing its SLAs or the streaming pipeline is just not able to keep up with the load and your lag is building. Or from a cost perspective, the pipeline is exceeding the budget that were located. So in today's talk, I'll talk about how can you monitor the health of your pipelines and have confidence that your pipelines are running in a healthy way. And even more importantly, if and when these pipelines become unhealthy, because nothing is unbreakable, pipelines break, and how do you get quick alerts as well as you're able to troubleshoot and fix these problems quickly? For that, I'll introduce this whole notion called health checks. I'll cover health check around these three dimensions, correctness, performance, as well as cost, and then wrap up the talk with a brief demo. Let's first take a look at the health checks for data pipeline correctness. Here are some examples. Some of these checks might be specified at a data level. For example, maybe a pipeline is creating daily partitions 
of a table. And the check might say that each partition should have at least a thousand records. And the check might say that a particular field should never have null values. From a machine learning modeling perspective, you might have features and there might be checks. For example, a particular feature should be normally distributed. Checks might also be at the application level or at the compute level of your pipeline. For example, a check might say that one of the evaluation rules that are defined per record, at least one root should fire. Or maybe there's a decision tree model that's actually being evaluated as the records are streaming in. A check might say that only nodes that are marked valid in the decision tree should be reached. There could be checks that define correctness at a dependency level. For example, a stage should only start after some other stage has finished. Who defines these checks? So as we'll see consistently throughout the talk, the checks might be defined by users. For correctness, a lot of the time, the check should indeed be defined by people knowledgeable about the pipeline. For example, you know, having null values for a field, in some contexts it might be okay and it's correct, but in some contexts it might not be. So capturing the application semantics is important. And we today have great tools, like great expectations, that make it very easy for pipeline developers to define these checks. But users cannot be expected to write and define all the checks, all those are best practice like to do so. What if the user did not define a check? Because a lot of the time, these checks might also be implicit that like the user knows, but never put it in the form of a check. And if these checks are not evaluated, then false negatives can arise, meaning your pipeline might generate incorrect results without you knowing so. One way to have or correct this problem is to have automatic checks that a system might be running. For example, you can automatically detect changes or anomalies, and those could automatically be captured in the form of checks. Now, one caveat to keep in mind is that you know, these automatic checks could induce false positives. There's maybe it's not really the pipeline is generating the right results, but the check did fire because it was an automatic check and not something the user had defined. And balancing false positives and negatives can be an art. The execution, the time, and the order of checks does matter. And it's a good practice, if not like you know, a must have practice to design your checks and their execution while you're designing the pipeline. For example, it might be crucial for the correctness of a machine learning model that the data be validated before it's actually input to the model. So what do you do when these checks fail? So you have to troubleshoot the problem and fix it. And this is where capturing these checks in the context of the run of the pipeline is very important for two reasons. One, the reason a check failed might actually the root cause might lie upstream in the pipeline. So understanding the lineage of the pipeline and the different stages in the pipeline is very important. Another thing is that a lot of the time checks fail because something changes. So having a history of these pipeline runs is also important. Let's take a look at some of these health checks for data pipeline performance. Having now looked at the checks for correctness. Here are some examples of the checks. If the pipeline is a bash pipeline, a check might define that the pipeline should complete by 6 a.m. in the morning. Or it could be that the pipeline is refreshing a dashboard. So the data in the dashboard should not be older than 10 minutes. If the pipeline is streaming, for example, a Kafka and Spark streaming pipeline, then a check might say that messages should be processed with the latency not to exceed 10 milliseconds. Or lag, that's unprocessed message, should never be more than 10,000. One good news about performance checks is that they often involve less context and application semantics compared to correctness. The best practice is to define end-to-end -end performance checks in the form of pipeline SLAs. Or, you might also want to define checks 
at different stages of your pipeline. For example, Airflow makes it easy to define a check at the level of a task, the maximum time a task can take. Just like with correctness, automatic checks can be very important because users don't often specify all the performance checks. SLAs are often implicit, but here it's very easy to build baselines of pipelines and then detect deviations from these pipeline runs while keeping in mind the caveat about false positives and false negatives. Once again, the timing of the checks execution is important. For example, it doesn't help a lot of time if the check only failed after the pipeline SLA was missed. And here the best practice is you to keep your pipeline stages short and frequent so checks can be frequently evaluated. From a troubleshooting and tuning perspective, for performance checks, it's very important to have a single pane of glass. For example, an airflow pipeline might have, might actually invox, invoke, invoke some pipeline code, right? That might then involve some code that actually spins up a cluster that then runs an app on the cluster. So having an end-to-end view is very important to troubleshoot problems. For example, if the app that eventually ran was slow. And a caveat here to keep in mind is that multi-tenancy can actually be a huge problem where an app that's totally unrelated to your pipeline might affect the performance of your pipeline. And this is where having automatic insights to root cause these problems becomes invaluable. Now let's deep dive into the health checks for pipeline cost, which have a lot of similarity with performance but cost is an uh, independent entity that's becoming more and more important. A check might define that a run of a pipeline should not exceed $100 in cost. Or some checks might be at a holistic level. For example, the overall budget that a pipeline can incur over a month. Just like with performance, cost also requires less uh, application semantics and context compared to things like correctness. And one good news here is that more and more data leaders are taking the initiative to correct, to create these cost-based checks. Because there's a huge opportunity, especially for cost inefficiency checks on the cloud, when these pipelines have a lot of moving parts. Check execution and automated actions are very important. The cloud vendor is not going to refund the cost incurred for a pipeline that had a cost overrun and budget overruns can actually get XX fired. To troubleshoot and fix problems when these checks fail, it's very important given all the moving parts that a pipeline might have. And more importantly, cost can actually be incurred in many different ways. Cost of storage, cost of compute, cost of IO. Automated insights to remedy problems. For example, finding the right size of containers or the right instances to use can be super critical. Having quickly seen the different kinds of health checks and the impact it can have in helping you monitor and track your pipelines, alert when pipelines are having issues, as well as quickly be able to troubleshoot and fix problems, let's take a quick look at a demo, a set of demo scenarios. I've prepared a few demo scenarios for you right here. And as you can see, I have examples here of a health check. The first one is a health check that failed at a performance level. The second is a health check that failed at a cost level. And the third is a health check that actually failed at a correctness level. Let's deep dive into the first one. What you're really seeing here is the unravel UI from where all these checks actually fired and we saw them in Slack. So this is the first pipeline run that actually had a performance check that failed. So this is like you know, in the middle panel here, you see all the details of the run itself. The pipeline is a reporting insights hourly pipeline, which was run on a cluster on behalf of the user. And what you can quickly see here is that pipeline took more than 300 seconds to run. But based on the baseline computation, Unravel is showing that the pipeline used to take 
less than a minute to run. So this is an example of a check that an automatic check that was able to build a baseline and detect a deviation from the baseline. The next question becomes, why did this check fail? You, so that you can troubleshoot and fix it. So you see on the rightmost panel here, and that is automatically doing checks at the level of individual confidence to check and help you troubleshoot the problem very quickly. And it's saying that a particular app that ran in this pipeline had a machine and it's pointing us to check out the cluster activity. And if we check that out, the reason becomes very obvious. You can see that the report reporting insights hourly pipeline is running and it's struggling for resources. And all these resources are being hogged by an ad hoc BI app. That is the one that is causing this pipeline to have a performance issue. The fix would be to either kill the app or move it into a queue so that its resources can be constrained so that those resources freed up can enable the pipeline, our SLA bound pipeline to finish on time so that all your data assets can be generated for use. Let's take a look at the second scenario. This is a scenario where a cost check actually failed. If you see this pipeline, once again, see the, uh, the unravel view from where the uh, alert was generated. And by clicking on that, we can come in this view. We can see that the runs of the pipeline based on the baselining take roughly $3 to run. But in this fuller run, which actually had a cost check fail, the cost exceeded $12. A very common problem that can happen in the cloud. And Unravel can help you troubleshoot and detect the cost of the problem. And what you can very quickly see here is runs of the pipeline used to have six components, but the run that failed the cost check had many more components. Maybe the developer changed the code. Once again, a common problem that can happen. Notice how a tool like Unravel that can bring all of this information together along with deep insights based on the data can help you find and fix these problems quickly. Last but not the least, let's take a look at a correctness check that field. If I take a look at you take a look at this one, it ran on time and uh, with proper cost, but it actually had correctness checks that failed. In this case, the checks were defined using great expectations. Six checks have been applied at this stage of the pipeline and one of them failed. And the failure is also giving you the reason. The number of records was much larger than what was expected. And notice that it also points out exactly where the problem is and gives you the full context in terms of the pipeline. So you can root cause where the problem happened and get the right team members on board to fix it. That was a short demo of how health checks can make it very easy to manage complex pipelines. If you're interested in following up, please check out our free trial or reach out to me at shipnath.unraveldata.com. Would love to hear feedback about, your, about the talk itself and how health checks might actually help you find and fix problems as well as streamline your pipelines. Also, if you're interested in the problem of migrating pipelines to the cloud quickly and efficiently, please check out our talk on lessons learned while migrating data pipelines from enterprise schedulers to Airflow. Thank you.